Voltaic Cells Objectives Describe a voltaic cell Draw and label parts of a voltaic cell Determine the direction of electron flow in a voltaic cell Identify the oxidation and reduction half cells Identify the anode and cathode in a voltaic cell Write the oxidation and reduction half reaction equations and finally identify the change in mass of the electrodes. Voltaic cells direction of electron flow reference table J. In a redox reaction electrons are transferred. The transfer can be designed in such a way however that it produces electric current. In the diagram below we have a zinc strip in copper sulfate solution. There is electron transfer between the zinc and the copper. However, we can separate this transfer. We can move the copper sulfate solution away from the zinc and place a copper strip in the copper sulfate solution and connect the zinc to the copper with a wire. The electrons now will flow between the zinc and the copper through the wire. Reference table J can inform us which direction the electrons are going to flow whether it's going to go from the zinc to the copper or the copper to the zinc. In reference table J, we identify zinc is above copper. And the rule states that electrons will flow from the most active metals to the least active. Here, zinc is higher up in the reference table J compared to copper. It is more active than copper. Therefore, electrons will flow from zinc to copper. In our cell, or voltaic cell, the electrons are going to flow from the zinc to the copper. It's going to move from the zinc electrode to the copper electrode. The direction of electron flow is from zinc to copper. Electrochemistry. In a voltaic cell, electric current, which are electrons, is produced from a spontaneous redox reaction. In our cell below, it is between zinc and copper. The electrons are flowing through the wire. The chemical energy is converted into electrical energy in a voltaic cell. Here we have solid zinc becoming Zn2+. Electrons are lost by the solid zinc, which is oxidized, and become Zn2 plus aqueous at the oxidation half cell. In so doing, the zinc electrode, the zinc strip, dissolves and becomes smaller. On, the, on this side, we have the Zn solid goes to become Zn2 plus aqueous, plus 2 electron. The zinc solid is dissolving into the solution, becoming Zn2 plus. On the other side, we have copper 2 plus ions in the solution, gaining electrons to become copper solid. In so doing, the copper strip becomes larger. The electrons are gained by the Cu2 plus aqueous, which is reduced and becomes Cu solid at the reduction half cell. Here again, Cu2 plus aqueous gains two electrons to become Cu solid. From oil rig, we know zinc is losing electrons. Therefore, on the zinc side, it's undergoing oxidation. While on the other side, we know the copper is gaining electron, and from rig, reduction is gain, reduction is taking place. Back to the zinc side, oxidation takes place at the anode. And to help you remember this, we can use anox, anode oxidation. While on the copper side, reduction takes place at a cathode. And to remember this, we can use red cat. The Electrode that's undergoing oxidation has a specific name, it's the anode, while the electrode that is undergoing reduction, specific name is cathode. Since electrons are coming out of the zinc, the zinc is negative. The oxidation part where the anode is, is negative. And to help us to remember this, we can use van. In a voltaic cell, the anode is negative. Therefore, the cathode must be positive. The cell is complete by adding a salt bridge.
parts of a voltaic cell. A voltaic cell consists of two half cells, one for oxidation and one for reduction. In these half cells, we have an ionic solution. In addition, we have electrodes. These are two strips of metal which is in contact with the ionic solution. The two electrodes have specific names, anode where oxidation takes place and cathode where reduction takes place. Next, the two electrodes are connected by a wire which allows for electrons to flow. Finally, we have a salt bridge. A salt bridge allows ions to flow and prevent the buildup of charges which maintains electrical neutrality. In addition to these four components, voltaic cells are sometimes depicted with a voltmeter which measures the voltage of the cell or the electrons flowing through the wire. In addition to the voltmeter, we may also include a switch which completes the circuit. These are the parts of a voltaic cell. Two half cells, here we have the zinc side and the copper side. Two electrodes, zinc and copper. A wire connecting the electrodes and a salt bridge connecting the solution of the two half cells. The electrodes. The electrodes are strips of metals which are in contact with the ionic solution in each half cell. Here we have a zinc electrode which is undergoing oxidation and is known as the anode. And here we have a copper electrode which is undergoing reduction and it is known as a cathode. Since electrons are flowing from the zinc to the copper. The zinc solid, the anode, loses electrons and becomes Zn2 plus aqueous which is dissolving into the solution. Here, the Zn solid becomes Zn2+. This results in the anode losing mass and becoming smaller. Let's zoom in to see what actually happened at the molecular level, at the atomic level. Here we have a strip of zinc, zinc atoms, and the zinc atoms have electrons in them. And one of the atoms loses two electrons. And in the process, it becomes Zn2+. And Zn2 plus dissolves into the solution. It's an ionic substance and dissolves into the solution to become an ion, Zn2 plus. And the zinc electrode actually becomes smaller over time. On the copper side, here we have the Cu2 plus in the reduction half cell gaining two electrons to become copper solid solid which, which deposits into the cop into the copper solid cathode side here cu2 plus gains two electrons to become cu solid this results in a cathode gaining mass and becoming larger going down to the atomic level we have a copper electrode on the right made up of copper atoms and in the solution we have copper 2 plus ions which gives the cuso4 solution a, its characteristic blue color. Here, the copper 2 plus ions are going to move towards the electrode, the copper electrode, where they are going to accept two electrons. And in so doing, the Cu2 plus becomes Cu solid and deposits on the copper electrode. And the copper electrode will eventually become much larger. The copper in the solution, as they are becoming copper solid, they leave the solution and the solution becomes lighter in color and it would not be as blue as it was at the start of the reaction. It's going to become much lighter in color. To help us remember that the cathode is what's getting larger, we can remember the red cat gets fat. The red cat gets fat. At the reduction, the cathode gets fat, the cathode gets larger. So therefore the anode would get smaller. The salt bridge. The salt bridge allows for the flow of ions to prevent the buildup of charges in each half cell. 
Solid bridges usually consist of a hollow U-tube, which is plugged up with cotton wool to keep a salt solution trapped in it. In our example, we have Na2SO4, sodium sulfate, trapped into this U-tube. The ions, the salt ions, are able to flow in and out of this U-tube, however. If the salt bridge was removed, the flow of electrons would stop and the voltmeter would read zero. Why is this? At the anode, the zinc solid is losing electrons and dissolving into the solution to become Zn2+. This half of the voltaic cell is going to become very positive. Therefore, the negative charges from the salt bridge is going to flow into this half cell, the oxidation side. The sulfate ions are going to go into this side of the half cell. While on the copper side, the cathode, Cu2 plus from the solution is going to become Cu solid. And this side of the half cell is going to become very negative because it's losing the positive Cu2 plus. Therefore, the positive charges from the salt bridge is going to flow into the reduction half. Here the Na plus is dissolving, is going into the cathode side, the reduction side of the half cell. In addition, Zn2 plus ions, since the zinc oxidation half cell is very positive, they can flow through the salt bridge to the other side. And the SO4 2 minus from the reduction half can flow through to the other side. If we were to look at the diagram, we notice that electrons are going from the zinc to the copper. So the electrons, the negative charges, are going from the zinc to the copper. But in the salt bridge, the negative charges are going from the copper side to the zinc side. So there's a flow of negative charges. The electrons are going from the zinc to the copper, and the SO4 from the salt bridge is going towards the zinc side. So the negative charges is flowing around to make a complete circuit. Stoichiometry in voltaic cells. Determine how many moles of silver plus ions are needed to completely react with 5 moles of PBS, lead. Here we have a voltaic cell where two Ag plus ions react with one lead to produce one lead 2 plus plus two silver ions. In the voltaic cell above, two moles of silver are required to completely react with one mole of lead. In our question, we are, in the reaction, we are given two moles of silver plus ions will produce one mole of lead. And the question asks us, how many moles of silver will be produced by 5 moles of lead? Setting up a ratio, cross multiplying, 5 twos, 10, x times 1 is x. Therefore, 10 moles of Ag plus ions are needed to react with 5 moles of lead. Practice question 1. In the voltaic cell below, determine the direction of electron flow, write the oxidation and reduction half reactions, identify the anode and cathode. Here we have a magnesium and a copper electrode. Using reference table J, we identify that magnesium is above copper. Therefore, electrons are going to flow from the most reactive to the least reactive. It's going to go from the magnesium to the copper. Electrons will flow from the magnesium to the copper. Now, since magnesium are losing electrons, it's going to become Mg2+. So in order to write that half equation, we have Mg solid goes to form Mg2 plus aqueous plus 2 electron. Oil rig oxidation is lost, so therefore this is the oxidation half equation. On the other side, copper 2 plus ions are gaining electrons to become Cu solid. Again, Cu2 plus ions aqueous gains 2 electrons to become Cu solid. Rig reduction is gain, so this would be the reduction half equation. An oil rig tells us is oxidation if it's losing electron. Rig means it's gaining electron reduction. We can go ahead and identify the anode. Anode is an ox. Anode is where oxidation takes place, and red cat reduction is where cathode is where the reduction takes place rather. 
we can add more information in a voltaic cell, VAN. The voltaic cell, the anode is negative, therefore the cathode must be positive. Just an additional piece of information. Back to question two. Determine the direction of electron flow. Write the oxidation reduction half reactions. Identify the anode and cathode. Same thing as the previous question, but in this example, we have zinc and silver. So using reference table J, we first need to determine the direction of electron flow. We identify that zinc is above silver. So the electrons are going to flow from zinc to silver. Next, since zinc is losing electrons, it's going to become Zn2+. So writing that half equation, Zn solid goes to become Zn2+, plus aqueous, plus 2 electrons. On the other side, silver plus is going to gain electrons to become silver solid. Here, Ag plus aqueous is going to gain an electron to become Ag solid. If we notice, there are two electrons produced by the zinc and only one electron accepted by the silver. In a redox reaction, the number of electrons lost was equal to the number of electrons gained. Therefore, we need to accept two electrons. To accept two electrons, we would need two silver ions. Two silver ions will gain two electrons to become two solid silver atoms. From oil rig, OIL, oxidation is loss of electrons, so the oxidation is taking place at the zinc side. RIG, reduction is taking place at the silver side. Where's the anode? Where's the cathode? Anox, oxidation takes place at the anode. Red cat. Reduction takes place at the cathode. From the voltaic in a voltaic cell from van, voltaic cell, the anode is negative. So we have the anode is being negative while the cathode is positive. Practice question three. Determine the direction of electron flow, write the oxidation reduction half reactions, and finally identify the anode and cathode. In this example, we are given a copper electrode and a lead electrode, Cu and Pb. What is the direction of electron flow? We go to reference table J. We identify that PB is at above copper. So the electrons now are going to flow from lead to copper. It's going to go from right to left, from lead to copper, from PB to Cu. In this case, we have PB losing electrons to the copper and becoming PB2+, becoming positive. Here, Pb solid is losing electrons to become Pb2 plus aqueous, plus 2 electrons. On the other side, we have the copper 2 plus ions in the solution gaining electrons to become Cu solid. So we have Cu2 plus aqueous plus 2 electrons to become Cu solid. From oil rig, we know that oxidation is loss of electron while reduction is gain of electron. To identify the anode and the cathode, anox, so the anode, oxidation takes place, red cat, reduction, cathode, which is positive, which is negative. Van, in a voltaic cell, the anode is negative, while the cathode must be positive. If we were to ask an additional question, say for example, which electrode loses mass? Red cat gets fat. So the reduction happens at a cathode, which gets fat. So the reduction side will get larger. The copper side will get larger, while the lead side is going to get smaller. 